Today may change tomorrow. In order to have the best expert advice, we have commissioned... Supercoach 360. <laughs> the time's going up. It's recording. And now, ladies and gentlemen, time for the show. Mate, 100%. Hi. We need to find out why they think it's OK to say anything. It's certainly one of the greatest challenges in the history of the game. That's what they want to try and do. Megastar to megastar! In this regard, we're leaving every option on the table. Excellent. Oh, what was that, buddy? something special! You know what? Uh, that's not talent. Oh. Uh-huh. Supercoach 360! The best way to handle these things is to stay measured, stay calm, you know, live your life as normal. But unless we start finding it off the people... They're actually just do it! It makes a little ordinary life feel a little bit better for that man. Makes you cool. Super Coach 360 podcast. G'day, welcome to Supercoach 360. How you doing? Jazzy J in the coach's box once again with my boys, Burks, Con, Louis is back. Uh, we're going to hear talk all things footy, all things Supercoach. It's been a massive week, massive weekend. Uh, a lot has happened. We've, uh, we're going to check in on the judiciary and what's happening over there. I believe uh, Dale Finucane is there tonight. And uh, there's going to be uh, some uh, some results coming out very, very soon. Uh, we've also got... Pardon, and we've also got Ross Mann's going to join us, talk team lists, talk uh, a bunch a bunch of stuff from the weekend as well. We've got uh, Brad Smith has sent in another video for us this week. So we're just loaded. Um... We're going to talk the Cowboys and the Tigers. We're going to talk head-to-head finals next week off the bat. That's the first thing we want to get started with. Burgo's over there doing the shares, but he feels very passionately about this. It's head-to-head finals next week, and that's it. You've, you've just got to be well aware of that. If you're on the, it's now or never, really. If uh, if you're on the cusp of taking home that league, I mean, at this point, you should know what you're in and what you're not. Uh, like for example, I'm on, I've got one league left, so it, for me it's it's all or nothing. I'm eighth place in that league. I'm on twenty points with about five other people. There's a couple of other people that are uh, like yeah, the top eight is still well in contention. That's the last league I've got left it's for a hundy. So you got to do what you got to do. It's time to get into this. Uh, use all your <laughs> use whatever trades you can. If you've got to boost up your sleeve, it might even be the time to use Won't that let this me week. Share it anyway, so all right. just keep sharing my own private ones. So. All right. What the fuck's going on? Sorry. Back, hey. What are we talking about? Head to head finals, bro. Yeah, massive time of the year, bro. Like, um if you if you're coming eighth like in your position, um, this is your week, man. You're gonna have to make some moves to make sure you've assured yourself the best possible chance to make that top eight and if you if you're not looking into the, if you're thinking this week's not the week next week when you might make it it's not really the smart play this week's your week it's a week to get there um anything can happen in super coach like i know trades are crucial and stuff but if you're umming and ahhing about someone i think it's time you just pull the trigger and do what you got to do to get him in or out whatever you've got to do uh what do you reckon yeah i agree Sitting pretty, save your trades. Yeah. Less yeah. worried about your ranking. Yeah, well, if you're, you're in... Yeah, if you're eighth, ninth, seventh kind of thing. If you're assured a top one or two position where you get another bite at the cherry, then I suggest oh. you hold on to your trades. So. Well, I'd, I'd go and have a look at my opponent's team as well. See what the situation of the other teams around me. See if they're going to win, lose, draw. Yeah. And then... Save me trades for as late as possible to see if I actually do need them, or if I can still beat this guy without them. Yeah, yeah. If this is this is your time. You really got to be onto it. Like you got to be onto it, especially if you're on the cusp of in or out of the eight. Like you are, Juzzy. Like yeah. you got to be focused over the next couple of days too to see who is in and out. Uh, you don't want to like end up playing a guy that's not playing. No, well that's it, and I've only got the two trades to use this week. I don't have a boost up my sleeve, so you know, what do I use those trades for? Do I use them to try and get as similar to my opponent's team, depending on how many I've got? Is there any must-have players? That, like for example, my opponent's got Teddy this week in that league. He's Teddy a must-have, boys. Oh, bloody hell, Con, you start this one. Am I chasing last week's points? No, oh, I think for this week, if it to get into a final or something, I'd I'd want Teddy in my team. Mainly seven men down. The only thing is they they got a tough draw after that. So you might make the finals 
That could be a quick exit. So I'd get him. So full of life, Con. Man, what have you been doing all day? You're just so full of life. No, well, I don't know. What do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah, Teddy for me as well. I think he, I think even with his run home, his Teddy, he's proved in the past after Origin them games, he's just he's an elite after those Origin games and we've seen him in Origin what he does and he brings it back to club land for some unknown reason. He doesn't do it much prior to Origin. No, he goes all right. But after Origin he's a different beast and I, I don't think the matchups are as hard as like they have been in the past for him. What are their matchup again? Broncos, Cowboys, Tigers, Storm, Rabbitohs, after Manly. See, Storm ain't what they used to be, and he's got a good chance in that of scoring some points. And I think the Rabbitohs leak a lot of points too. They can just score a lot as well. So I think his draw is not as bad as we sort of looking at on paper. I think he's got he's he's that guy that's like I was saying about Trell last week. He's he's the guy that's going over for them points most of the time this time of year, um, or at least hand hand and tries off like he did for Suwali and Tupu on the weekend. Like he's just he's a beast. Yeah, I'd be looking at getting him, Jazzy. <laughs> All right, beautiful. <laughs> well. Aside from head-to-head finals, what else we got this week? I mean, the, the big talking point, we'll throw to it now. I know you boys have a little bit of a chat about it with Ross Mann, but Manly, what's happened here? Is um, this Pride round or is this Women in League round? Can someone on Facebook I'm, help me out, please? I'm not sure what round it is anymore. It's Women in League round. But for me, it's a, it's, it's a cop-out, them not playing like the game for me. I just think we're meant to be a professional sport. People are meant to be above it if... If really, if it was that big a deal, um, I'm sure, it, and everyone wanted to play what? and make it an inclusive round, they could have even taped over it if it was that what? much of a big deal. But. Why did Manly have to do this in Women in League round? Why couldn't they wait for another round? Because now we've heard nothing about Women in League rounds being hijacked by this stuff, and I just well, there's think the women deserve better. Well, well all our mums took us to footy and shit, you know, like... It, 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 there is a place for women in league, like a lot of mums. There's a, there's a place for everyone in league. Yeah, bro, we've, we've got the NRLW now. There's a women's competition. Yeah, like you know, the, and the objective for that obviously is to get it out to all sixteen, well, seventeen teams. You know, eighteen by the time they get the next expansion in. I'm not sure the growth rate of which they're aiming for it, but they added like another what four teams this year. Or women's, two teams this the year. Women's did. Yeah, I, exactly. I'm not, I know uh, Newcastle that, came. I think, I think up to eight teams now, aren't they? Lost one, added three. Lost Warriors and added Newcastle, South, I don't know. Newcastle. You've got me. Para? Did Para get a team? Yeah, I think Para did. Yeah. I'm not sure, but yeah, like, look, for me, it's, it's, there's massive repercussions super coach wise as well with this happening. Like, everyone, a lot of people have Ola Kawatu, a lot of people got Tulipulotu, a lot of people got Kula. Um, some people got shoes, especially in drafts and stuff as well. Um, and for for everyone to just be so cool with him going, oh, well, you blokes aren't playing. Well, that's that's not part of the sport either. It's meant to be an all inclusive sport where everyone feels that they get a go. But with this backlash from the from the especially from the manly players, like if there ever is a gay footballer, he's not going to feel comfortable ever coming out after shit like this. But what? I merely have that same jersey with white stripes. Why couldn't those seven players wear that? Like, it's not a significant difference in jerseys, so it's not like the other team's going to confuse them for different players or anything. Why couldn't they just come to a... What's the word I'm looking for? An agreement? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Um, a compromise. Yeah, they all could they could have been compromised, but I think it was sprung on the the players, and I think it was sprung on a lot of people other than board members. That didn't really know. Ian Roberts seemed to know, but none of the players or coaching staff seemed to know. So it was, I guess, a shock, especially to there are still religions out there that are, um, haven't come to the park with stuff like that yet. But well, we've seen Israel Flau lose his rugby union career over it. Yeah, and and that was a bit different again. But this, he he, that was an extreme. Yeah, he he 
went out of his way to verbally attack people, really. Yeah. These guys haven't done that, but the league should have been trying to fix something. Like, now, like, I know a couple of people that are missing players and mainly aren't going to turn up anywhere near as good as they should without some of these players. And the the Roosters benefit the most. Yeah, they've got a nice, easy game. In their defence, but Supercoach is not a relevant factor in this no, argument it, it, today. No, it isn't, but we're a Supercoach podcast, so I had to drop oh, that yeah, in there. Yeah. But uh, no, well, look, it, for me, like I've I, I got a gay brother, you all know I've got a gay brother, and for me, this is, it, it, like, I know it shouldn't have been done in women in the league round, it should have been done in another round, but that, he loves Souths, you know what I mean? He loves his footy, he... he, he, he is just as much of a lover of the sport as <laughs> as anyone else, and and we want to be inclusive sport. We've got indigenous round, we've got women's round, we've got um, multicultural rounds. Like they're, 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 I'm not saying we need to rush out and do it, but it's that surely they deserve a place or a round. We we give rounds away willy nilly anyway. We got magic round, and you know why not just let them have a gay pride round. People got gay friends. I've got no doubt some of these people got gay friends. Anyway, we're going on to the Roscoe video. Yeah, bro, let's go. Go. Roscoe. Hello, boys. How are we? Good, good mate. Coach. How are you? Yeah, good. Good. It's good to be back on. It's been a while. So, um, yeah, it's good to get back on and have a bit of a chat about some super coach again. What kind of stuff have you got for us, buddy? So I think we just go quickly go through the teams because obviously there's a bit of carnage this week with um, Manly in particular. Um, yep. And I think while we go through each team, we might look at some options on players to bring in potentially as well. Yep. Um, and maybe look at the end of who we think might be a sell this week and go from there. So, Sweet, sounds good. Yeah. So first game we've got up is uh, Manly against the Roosters. Now, obviously... Manly have had a few issues with certain players refusing to play because of the jerseys. So um, so they've got a stack of changes. They've got seven players out this week. So you've got um, Jason Saab, Christian Tupolotu, Koala, Aoli, Olakuatu, Stipley and Schuster all making themselves not available to play. Yeah. Now, I don't know. I don't want to have a quick chat about this. But what's your guys' take on this? I mean... You know, obviously they're saying it's against their religious beliefs, but, you know, you're talking about a club that's sponsored by a, at a stadium that's got alcohol and, you know, that's an alcohol brand, and then they've got uh, gambling sponsorship on their jerseys too. So what do you guys think of it all? It's a cop-out. It's a cop-out. It's, it's, it's a ploy. Like, it's, it's shit for me. Like, I think it's stupid. But um, the fact that they're boycotting it or the fact that they're wearing a jersey? The fact that they won't wear a jersey. Yeah. It's it's a couple of colours, mate. Like, if you go through over the years, everyone's had a weird colour on their jersey every now and again. Or, you know, it's just one of the things that they're just carrying. You know what? They're carrying on. Yeah. They're yeah. carrying on exactly like the community that stereotype that they're, you know, talking about. Well, at the end of the day, for me, I mean, you know, it's up to them what they want to do, but it's only a jersey that they're wearing at the end of the day. It's not like they're really supporting it by wearing the jersey, but. Each to their own, I suppose. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But you know what? It takes the professional out of professional athlete, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because you 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 paid to run a ball, not run your mouth. What's well, the same? So, with, it was the same with Payne Haas when he refused to wear the jersey because it had the alcohol or something sponsorship on it too. So, well, I, you can see both sides of you. Can, yeah, I can see the where people say this kind of stuff doesn't belong in sport, it belongs in the political arena and whatnot, that kind of stuff. And yeah. I can also say that, yeah, just it's just a jersey, like put it on and wear it. Yeah. You get paid to wear a jersey every week, just do it. But to, I think to not include those players who don't want to wear the jersey when we're trying to be inclusive, to exclude them at the same time we're trying to be inclusive is they kind of counterintuitive themselves. to me. It's like, yeah. They excluded themselves, but... Yeah. I, well, they refused to wear the jersey and they were told they couldn't play if they didn't wear that jersey. Yeah. So, so we're the excluding jersey for, them for not wearing a jersey. It's the jersey for the week. I'm, you paid to wear a jersey. I, I get so. it. I get it. Yeah. I think it's their right to choose if mm. they don't want to. All right. It. Okay, I was going to save this for a bit later, but I'm going to say it now. 
since the whole like, gay marriage thing in Australia, the, ga- the churches will take the gays' money if they want to get married in their church now. So what's the big fucking deal? What, that you'll take their money but you won't accept it? Fuck yeah. off, you're accepting their money. You know yeah. what I mean? Nine out of ten churches. Well, I, I, I don't, don't know about exactly. Polynesian churches. Yeah, I don't exactly be know what religion there. But, yeah. Right. I, mean, oh, I used to their own, I suppose, right? So Yeah, but I think it's a Captain Teddy week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not even bothering. I'm not even bothering with the VC. Just like yeah, yeah. straight on him. So, yeah. Um, so they've got two day, two two to debut. Uh, mainly they've got Pino Seki and Alfred Smalley, um, and then Curtis, Curtis uh, Delui and Ethan Bullimore come into the side as well. Um, still no Burbo. I'm guessing that's because of his HIA last week. They haven't named him at all. So yeah. he's not there at all. So. Um, but they get Turbo back, um, Gerbo, I should say, back, and they get Lachlan Croker back and Davey all back from COVID too. So it's a little bit, bit of experience there. But, um, yeah, and then the Roosters, obviously Manu comes back in, Drew Hutchinson drops back to the bench, um, and then Lodge goes back to the bench because they've got Lindsay Collins comes back into the team. Yeah. Um, so while we're on the Roosters, I think, I don't know if you guys agree. If you haven't got Manu, I think he's pretty much a must-have for this week against this Manly team. Oh, I don't know about must-have just because of their draw, but if you're looking at a, maybe a one- or two-week play, I can see the merit in it. Um, but they've got a pretty rough draw, and it worries me. Him take He might take away from Teddy as well if he does go on a good run, but Teddy seems to be the man at the moment. Yeah. What do you think, Oh. I wouldn't begrudge anyone from having him, but yeah, after Manly, they got the Broncos, Cowboys, Tigers, Storm, Rabbitohs. So it's it's hard after this week. If you already got him, you're laughing, but yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be jumping over myself to get him personally. Who's yeah. eight K? Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. that's what turned me off. Who's eight hundred K for for eight hundred K? You could probably you could jump on a Mulatalo now for his. Mad run. Well, more times next week's prospect. You'll be about yeah, not, this, not, this, not, not this week when they're playing south. Yeah. 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 Next week yeah. when he's got runs into the Dragons, yeah. Tigers, merely Bulldogs. That's when you get Ronaldo. Yeah. Anyway, we'll go on to the next game. So Warriors are playing the Storm in the next game. So Warriors have made another shuffle. So Reese Walsh has gone back to fullback again. Um, <laughs> After his 14 minutes in off the bench, and Harris Tavita drops, uh, goes to 5 8, then RC drops out of the 17. Um, Arthur's is out, so Montoya moves from the wing to the centre, and Ed Cossey returns to the side as well. Um, and then for the Storm, they've gone for the same side pretty much, except for Jordan Grant replaces Tom Ison, who's on the bench. There's not really much yeah. relevant there, is there, really? The Super Cup. Oh, I, expect, I expect Melbourne to come back, but will they is the question. I'm expecting both Warriors and Titans the next two weeks to play uh, Storm back in the form. 100%. Yeah. So, Big um, one from Munster after four bad weeks. He doesn't yeah. want another rough week of training. He's going to turn it on this week. Yeah, definitely. I, I think he's in for a big game as well. So the next game is a big game, one of the game of the rounds, which is Parra versus Penrith. Um, for Parra, they've only just got the one change. Cartwright comes back into the team on the bench. Replacing Jacob Arthur, who's a bit of a waste of a space on the bench for Parramatta when he plays about the whole five minutes. Um, and then for the Panthers, obviously, Stephen Crichton's out because he had the surgery on his ear. Um, so Robert Jennings will replace him in the centres. Uh, Luai's out with, him, with his knee injury. Up, they're talking about up to eight weeks for him. So yeah. um, we'll talk about him in a minute, but uh, he used to be replaced by Sean O'Sullivan. Um, and I'm a bit, bit iffy about this one. This doesn't make sense. Charlie Staines has been added to the bench, replacing Mitch Kenny, who's out with an injury. Uh, it's, yeah, it's I'm, scratching head, I'm, scratching head at, I'm scratching my head at that one because where are they going to play him? I can see Stephen Crichton moving to six. No, Stephen Crichton's out. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's out with his – he had to have the surgery on his ear, so he's out. Yeah. Yeah, justice for Dale. That's right. So yeah. who's starting a wing then? Um, no, we've got Jennings replacing Critter, yeah. uh, Critter in the centres. Okay. Um, well, I don't, look, I know, I know that 
Charlie Staines played a bit of fullback in grade, so my only thing is they might be concerned about the sixth position. That's it for me. Yeah. Or if Jennings exposed. Yeah, it'll be a late exclusion. I don't think he'll stay on the bench. No, you can't have him on the bench. So we'll talk about Luai quickly, I guess. I mean, do we think he's a massive loss for the Panthers or do we think O'Sullivan will just come in and do the job? Oh, for me, like I said this to Con earlier, the only the only loss for Penrith is now they don't have that little niggling grub that just, just gets under the people's skin as much. So. They lose that little bit of unpredictability without Luai, but I don't feel it's going to hurt Penrith. Yeah. Yeah. It's different really at all. It'd be a bit but, different if it was Cleary that was out for eight weeks. Yeah. If they lost Cleary or Yo, totally yeah. different story. But yeah. I, I, I'm not sure on Sean O'Sullivan as a replacement. I think him and Nate, they're a bit too same-same. Well, so, I guess I was thinking they might have gone with Kurt Falls, but I guess they want the experience with O'Sullivan, I suppose. I guess. Yeah. Experience him up for the Dolphins next year. Time will tell. Time will tell. All right, so next game is Titans versus Raiders. Um, so for the Titans, Big Tino is moving to prop, um, and Aaron Clark is starting at lock. Um, Isaac, I like Isaac, I like it too. Isaac Lou drops out of the team, um, and Jaden Kelly's been named on the bench again. Um, and Brian Kelly takes Corey Thompson's spot in the 17 as well, with Patrick Herbert moving to the wing. And obviously, Kevin Proctor has been sacked. Not that he was getting named anyway for vaping at the ground. Well, not yet. You know, if they wanted an excuse to sack him, they've just had that. It's just exactly what that's just done. Why yeah, is it so silly like that? They well, wanted him gone and they, they managed to get a reason to sack him and that's it. He handed it to him on a silver platter. Like, it's one thing vaping in the sheds at half time in the toilet, but then to post yourself doing it, it's just... Yeah. You should be sacked for being an idiot. Yeah. Um, no, I agree with you, Con, with that move with Tino moving to, to prop two. I think Aaron Clark was really good when he started at lock a couple of weeks ago when Tino started off the bench when he backed up from origin. So I don't yeah, mind that. Two he weeks really ago good. he started and he scored quite well. He was busy. Yeah. He had footwork, breaks and tackles, a few offloads and stuff. And then last week he came on in the same role and, was equally good. I think just limited less minutes. So yeah. he's definitely on my radar if he's going to play decent minutes and keep that role. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for the Raiders, Stewart stuck to the same 17, so no changes there for them. The next game we've got is the Sharks and Souths. Um, Sharks have got an unnamed, unnamed team, but obviously depending on Dale Finnecane's result at the judiciary, uh, which we might talk about in a minute because I think it was a complete cop-out. He should have um, no case, no case to answer. No, he shouldn't have. I agree. And I, mind you, though, I have Cameron, Cameron McGuinness, so I'm kind of hoping he does get suspended so McGuinness starts. But I if don't. We suspend people for that. We're going to have no one playing the game in yeah. a couple of weeks. There's 30 yeah. of them every game. Maybe not to that That's extent, true. but there's head clashes all game, every oh, yeah. game. Yeah. I mean, can, the fact that he didn't even get penalised for it or anything, and then they decide to suspend him for two to three weeks afterwards, it's just... That just shows on... just shows how much inconsistency there is at the moment. Well, honestly. everyone's on different pages. Yep. The mass review committee, the judiciary, and the refs, they're all on a different... Yep. They're all marking them different ways, and yep. it's stupid. Yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, for South, Mark Nichols is out injured. Um, replaced by um, Daniel Fafita, who will start in the side. Um, and that's the only changes for them. Um, for Broncos versus Tigers, uh, there's a few changes for the Broncos. Um, so Sylvan Cobo still out remains sideline with his concussion. Um, Billy Walters is back starting at hooker. So Turpin goes to the reserves. Um, Jordan Pereira is out with illness. So Delise Huta gets another run on the wing. And Brenko Lee's been um, pushed back to the reserves and Dean Mariner will start at centres. Um, and T. Marie Martin is um, named as 18th man as he come, makes his way back from injury. And then yeah, for the night, yep. Well, Ho- Hoyter will be on Stags' side, you'd have to think, this week too. Yeah. He'll play right, I'll just play left. Yeah. Be a good pick-up. If, you, if, if people picked him up for the bye period, then good luck to them because you'll probably carve up the Tigers this week. I'd be Someone playing him. I'd be playing him. 
100. I'm definitely playing him. I think the Tigers played their grand final last week. I can't see him getting yeah. up like that two weeks in a row. Yeah. They spent three after losing the way they did. Yeah. That's crushing. Yeah. And then, nice for, guy, <laughs> and then for the Tigers, Alex Seafarf comes into the back row for Luke Garner. The only change to the 13. Um, Austin Diaz comes onto the bench. Um, and obviously, they'll get both their coaches back this week because they'll both out with COVID. So, mm. yeah. <coughs> um, yeah, that's been COVID. Oh, no. Um, talking about, I just can't believe what happened last week in that game, Tigers game, but still, still shaking my head at that. <laughs> I'm sure you guys will talk about it tonight on the podcast. I'm sure yeah. you will. Um, so, next game's Knights versus Bulldogs. Uh, for the Knights, obviously, Pong is out. For the rest of the season, the same with concussion. Um, Tex Hoy will start at fullback. Uh, Brody Jones comes into the team, and uh, Kurt Mann and Dominic Young are, le- are named amongst the reserves. So they make their way back from injury. For the Bulldogs, Jake Avrillo returns from COVID. So Declan Casey goes back to the reserves. Uh, Corey Waddell's been named. He's got to face the judiciary tonight for a. Um, was it a eye gouge? Eye gouge on Tino. Um, mm. Yeah, and then well, there was no Hudson Young. Yeah, and then Mar- F- Fatala Mariner is out with a rib injury, so Josh, Josh Jackson goes to lock, and Justin Toppany comes into the side in the second row. Um, and then the last game of the round is Dragons versus Cowboys. For the Dragons, obviously, Cody Reams is out injured, so Moses and Bile start fullback for them. Um, and then they've got Tyrone Sloan named onto the bench. Uh, they've got Tarek Sims into the starting side. Um, and then for the Cowboys, they're stuck to the same 17, but Ruben Cotter is named on the extended bench for them. Hopefully he gets a start this week. Yeah. And that's it for the teams for this week. Yeah, good stuff. So, all in all, a pretty good one. Yeah, not too many surprises, I guess, really there, is there? No. So. Anyone you're going to sit that's going to be surprising this week, Roscoe? Anyone that I'm going to sit? Yeah. Um, I'm contemplating not playing Dylan Brown this week. Yeah. Only because they're playing, they're playing the Panthers, but... Um, I'm still – I'm an hour on my trades. I'm, I keep saying to myself, you know, I keep saying Manu's a must-have this week, but then I just don't know because he could carve it up this week, no problems, but then the next few weeks he could do nothing. So yeah. I've got to justify paying 800 k for him. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the thing. <laughs> I look into his draw and if you're really onto it, you can probably look at the sides he's playing and see where they're letting in the most points and hope it's yeah. his side. Yeah. No, I think more Tullo next week for almost half his price yep. is much better value. Yeah. And spend the money, other money elsewhere. Yeah, well, I've still got more Tullo in my team. I was just told him I'm just I'm just gonna play I'm not gonna play him this week and I didn't play him last week either. So um, Yeah, I'm, I'm not playing Hines this week and I didn't play <laughs> Hines last week and didn't hurt me too much. Well that's good. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. um what else do you want to talk about, boys? Who do you guys think are, are, are buys for this week? I mean, I've noticed, I think I saw earlier today that Payne Haas is the most traded in this week. Like 5,000 tr- people have jumped on him. I'm strongly looking at upgrading Nelson for him because Nelson's starting to dip off now. I've got a, I've got a few good scores out of Nelson, but for 60K, I can upgrade to Payne Haas. Oh, I don't. I, that, that's, a, that's a trade that makes sense. But for me, I seem to be chasing point, last week's points. Not really. If, he's if still, you're upgrading, I can understand, but I don't he's still know. That, he's still he's still the forward. He's still that forward. He's just like you said. He don't look as injured as as they made out, you know. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm bringing him in this week. I'm getting him back. Who are you selling? Clem. Okay. He score he scores are kind of dropped off a little bit as of yeah. late, so. I think I can take that sixty thousand from him to Haas and use yeah. it elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I've held him the whole time. So I obviously not gonna trade I won't be trading him in, but I don't know if I'd be trading him in if I didn't have him, but it depends on who you're trading to and from though. You know what yeah. I mean? I like I mean Berg's your trade makes sense going Haas to from um Nass, so 
yeah, certainly makes sense to me. Um, yeah, so who else do we think is a good trade-in for this week? Um, well, I'm, I'm personally getting Harry back this week. I know Storm have been hopeless of late, but I'm of the opinion that, like you, they'll be played in the form over the next fortnight and yeah. continue that on. And at 560K, I'm getting on now. Yeah, I was contemplating getting him because I did want to have him for the run home, but I've got Appy and McInnes at the moment. I'm actually quite happy with how they're travelling at the moment, those two. Yep. Yeah. So I might see how Grant goes this week. And if he scores okay and he plays 80 minutes, I might look at bringing him in next week and maybe not sell McInnes, but sell someone in the second row or somewhere else and move McInnes down to the back row or something. Yeah. Yeah. So I sold buddy Alec, Alec McDonald for him and moved Cotter down. Okay. Um, what do you guys think about Talakai? Do you think he's still worth holding? A lot of people saying that they've got a good run coming up after this week, but for me, I'm not convinced. I'm actually looking at moving him on this week because he's really done nothing since that Manly game. Oh, I think he's much like Ronaldo. One more week, he'll start to find some more attacking stats and he'll be all right. Yeah, the drive run home's too good, eh? I think if you've held him through this rough period of the last month, you might as well get this good run out of him at least. Yeah. yeah. It's a hard one because, you know, I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't because if I sell him, I'll probably, he'll probably go big. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyone else that you guys think be worth jumping on for this week? Um. Not not so much this week. I think there's a lot more prospects next week and the week yeah. after. Yeah. So hold you save your trades if you can. How yeah, if you trades, don't have, how many trades have you guys all got left? I've got five after using two this week. Okay. I've got six before using any. Yeah. So five if I um bring in pain ass. I got I got five plus a boost left. Before yeah, I've got trade, a boost before well. trades this week. I've got a boost as well. Nice. Yeah. Sitting pretty. Yeah. See, the team's sitting okay. A um, couple more trades to make, but we'll see what happens with this week. As I said, I've got to work out whether I'm going to get on to Manu or not. So, yeah. You know, because with the trade situation I'm in, I don't want to bring him in this week and then be selling him in two weeks. You know what I mean? It's not worth it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah bring it in. Holders, man, you want to bring in people, you got to keep to the end and bring you home strong. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we better wrap it up because we got to start. Right. No worries. But, uh, good, chat, good chatting with you, bro. Thanks all for your good. insight. Not a Thanks, buddy. See, see you, Roscoe. Enjoy, I'm good with the pod. See you guys. Bye. All right, cheers, Roscoe, for that. Appreciate your time, mate, and some things to look into there for the guys and girl coaches out there. I uh, just want to do a quick shout out to the Super Coach Hub Discord. I'll be on their podcast tomorrow night. You'll find it on Spotify and most likely all other places like that. Um, the Discord, do Matt. Like if you really get into your Super Coach, I think the Discord's the place to be for you. It's just for some of the great Super Coach minds. To be really honest with you, like you get in there and they'll answer any questions for you, and they normally spear in the right direction. Uh, you can find all other podcasts as far as I know, in the Discord as well. So it really is a good place to check out. Uh, so, yeah, get on the Discord, Supercoach Hub Discord. Um, all right, so we're going to go on to the Cows Tigers. We didn't want to touch on it with Roscoe too much because it's probably a touchy subject. Sorry, Roscoe. And all other Tigers supporters out there. But uh, we'll start with, we'll start with you. We'll start with you first, Jazzy. Robbed or not robbed? Robbed, it was garbage. Robbed, you feel the Tigers were robbed? Yeah, 100%. That was garbage. I mean, I don't care what the letter of the law is. There was no way he was even going to get anywhere near the play, have an effect on it. He was so far off from where the ball actually came down, had no effect on it, and it was just garbage, garbage, garbage. Not a fan. Not John, fun. you going to rebuttal that? Yeah, I, I don't like the way it all unfolded, and I feel for the Tigers, but I feel the decision was correct. Oh, it was. It's a, if you really look at what it was, it was a escort penalty. Old mate deviated off his line. There was all the markings of a penalty there. Well, um, he, he didn't so much deviate. He accelerated off his point, not towards where the ball was going to land, 
but in Kyle Felt's in felt Felt's dove. line. Felt dove. He Don't did give me that. He sold it. That's felt dove. That's but if, if old mate doesn't touch him and get in front of him like that, Felt has no reason to die. Are we playing soccer? That's the NRL. Are we playing, no, but that's the, are we playing soccer? Mate, felt It's been in the game dove, for five bro. years now. Milk. Yeah, but that's it. It was a garbage penalty because he fell down and he milked it. And technically, that may be the rule. But the reality is he was not going to have an impact Definitely on not. the play. Look, now, if the play had fumbled and he had had a chance then, another couple of seconds to actually then get there and influence a play, I might be this swinging the other way. So how, do you, how do you know him getting 10 metres closer didn't. and putting that little bit of pressure on Dane It wasn't Laura, 10 metres, bro. Dane Laurie. It was not 10 metres. that it, The ball came down not long after he dove. He was ages away. But he fell down. Letter of the law, then, old mate, if he was that far away, old mate should have never got in his way. I right. think the problem is that that part is coached into the game. Well, they know is, what to is. do. It is. it is, and it's, like, granted, it's 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 applied on the game, but it's where we're at as a sport. Um, but that's the problem. You see that? Get, that's what we've got to get angry about is the fact that that's where we're at as the sport, the fact that they can do that and they get away with well, it. Like, some of the tactics that I've seen played out in this game are just absolutely ludicrous. Like, the way the trainers have been used in the last couple of years, they've had to crack down on that. We haven't had any training issues really this year so far. Oh, so they're good. always out there, mate. Party, yeah, you yeah. Know, like... For sure. And, look, we've got finals coming, and that's when anything, you know, any boundaries are going to be pushed because anything for the finals, right? But, bro, that was a dive. He was not going to impact the play. It's not like... Nah. Definitely not. But we see the same, you see the same instance week in, week out. Almost every game that there's an escort penalty, old mate's not going to get there. There's bugger all likely chance of him getting him. Because yeah. old mate just denies him the opportunity of even having a chance of attempting to get there. Unfortunately, it's a penalty. And it's been a penalty for a long time. Well, it's it's I hate the penalty, but unfortunately the coaches have brought it on themselves by training their players to get in the front of the chases like that. Yeah. It happens so often, and it's such a fine line between an escort and not. You know what I mean? Well, that's it. You have to get there and plant your feet, like a kind of like a blocker. block in the NBA kind of thing. If you're not planted, you're obstruction. You're getting the blocking foul, not the charging call against them. So yeah, no, it's, it is. It's look, I understand, and I fully feel for the Tigers. They were up for that game. They were in it. That was their their game of the year for them. They really stuck it to the cows and. Look, at the end of the day, they probably did deserve a win. I'm not sure about the whole, like, being able to challenge shit after 80 minutes. I thought that should be done within an 80-minute period. Um, it was because of it was technically the game was stopped, right? Like, there was that final stoppage being the siren, which stopped play, which just gave them the ability to challenge. I mean, for me, watching it, it seemed odd that they were allowed to challenge. It seems like it took a while before they were allowed to challenge. Well, no, he couldn't hear, because so, everyone was blowing stacks. Everyone was, but he couldn't yeah. hear anything. He was walking up and down, trying to, I was watching trying him, to trying to get people. anything, just something. He didn't know what to do. And, yeah, it ended in just a fucking fuss. I, I take it back to two minutes before that, where Adam Dewey... Just didn't go through his goal kicking process. He tried to stall and stall and just stood there like a statue looking at the goal post, trying to milk as much time on the clock and then hit the post with his conversion. Just goes through his process, kicks that ball. This dilemma doesn't even Well, you said happen. before how to get an extra, like, um, 15 minutes of footy just to, to stop the game after the try, like you said, and go through your motions, spend as long as you want. You know what I mean? Because um, no one's losing any time and it's... It's probably a good idea, man. Like, it's, I don't know, we don't have the power to write to the people, but we do, but... I think they're only allowed a maximum of... I think only a maximum of a minute comes off the clock. For yeah, but if you, score, if you score a try, like, like Con said, in, in a, in a heavily, especially a heavily point-scoring game, you're losing so much football, I think. What, what was it? How many minutes did well, you if, say? If you score the try, then you go back, set up for the kick, take the kick, go to halfway, you're losing a minute and a half, two minutes. Yeah. Six tries, there's 12 minutes. What was the minutes played averagely on a game at the moment? 52. You say? Which is fucking poor for an 80 minute sport. So there's 28 minutes of no ball play in an NRL game. Having a I think that's insufficient. That's well, not that's, good enough. I think last year, I think you'll find last year the ball was in play a hell of a lot more. And that's where our super coach scores came from. Like we looked earlier and everyone's pretty much 10 to 15 points behind minimum. 
from last year's stats. So, yeah, that was another crushing thing for at the start of this year for all of us. If we went the wrong way, then all your money got dro just sucked straight up. Turbo. Yeah, Turbo was one of them, yeah. But, um, yeah, I do feel, look, I really do feel for Tigers supporters, but cows, I think the officials got it right that day. Honestly, come out and said they got it wrong. I don't give a fuck what Annesley said. He's just powering to the people. He's pondering up to the people. They didn't get it oh. wrong that day. Maybe the challenge. Maybe the challenge after 80 minutes they got wrong that day. But other than that, I don't think they got that wrong at all. If you, Like he said, go watch any game of football and you watch any escort. That's exactly what happens in an escort penalty. To the letter of the law. Old mate's deviated off his line. Granted, you said he didn't really deviate, accelerated, but there was slight movement. And I'm pretty sure you have to make a direct route towards the ball. Yeah. yeah. But, but to his defence, too, he, I don't think he ever looked at Kyle Felt. I think he always looked at No, the ball, he, he played it inch perfect. Like, if you're going to sell it and get away with it, that's the blueprint. Just improve it a little bit. Yeah. All right, I want to go back to Supercoach quickly. Um, to Huss or not to Huss, boys? I, I'm honestly thinking about bringing him in for my side. Yeah, well, that's um, yeah, well, it. I pulled the trigger on Clem to him this week. I know it's. I know it's like oh, everyone's going probably chasing a little bit of last week's points. I, do, I don't think so. I think he's a beast, man. And it, look, if Broncos are going to make the finals, he's going to be a massive part of that. Well, that was his first try all year. You got no mind. Yeah, he's um, first try all year. So for, for me, I think he's probably got one or two more in him before finals. Um, I think you'll get there. Fuck it, I'm saying it. Jump on. Um, for me. Yeah, for me, I'm definitely getting on. Um, been a premium forward for a long time now. Three or four years, solid. Only eye pat nipping at his heels, who's doing a bit of a lull. Still scoring 70s, but was going 90s there for a bit. Um, also, Cotter. Cotter's named on the extended bench. Um, who's that? Is that going to affect the Lolo or anything like that if you are playing... Lolo in your front row, do you think God is going to come back and steal some minutes off him? If not this week, next week for sure? Or No, I think when they were playing together, Lolo was producing good scores then too, so... Yeah. Because Cotter's, Cotter's a machine. Do you have to jump back on? Well, do you have to jump on Cotter if you don't have him? Oh, I'd wait and see. Yeah. I'd, oh, oh. If he starts putting out his numbers like he did before Origin... I'd be definitely having a look. Yeah, tackle by 5,000, man. Oh, especially there, as a it. second hooker or something where points aren't so free-flowing and your back row's already going good. So if you're one of them spots, you could easily put and him. Him, him and Lolo work good, yeah, because they both get reasonably quick play to ball so they can feed off the back of each other. All right, um, yeah. So have a keep an eye on Cotter. Now, we're going to do Brad Singh. Yeah. Quickly, uh, just while we're off doing Brad's thing, if you want to throw some live questions in the live, um, and we'll get to them after we do Brad's. Good evening, super coaches. Good evening to the panel, Con Berg, and uh, of course Juzzy. I hope everyone's well there, and um, have uh, got some good scores out of last week. There's certainly some big scores around. Uh, what a crazy couple of days in the NRL. What a load of shit, hey? That, uh, that decision on late on Sunday with the Tigers, um, that still stinks to me. You know, I, I, I understand people are going to make mistakes and referees are going to make mistakes. However, some of the explanations, particularly um, uh, in regards to the time frame of the captain's challenge, etc., still don't really wash with me. I, I I think they're just excuses. I think it's a massive balls up by the NRL, and they really should look at um, maybe tightening up that so that it never happens again. Because it's uh, it certainly left a foul taste in a lot of people's mouths. Uh, I'm talking about a foul taste in a lot of people's mouths. We've got the manly situation now upon us, of course, and um, you know I. What an absolute balls up by the club, you know. What an absolute shitstorm that they've created by their own stupidity um, in, in this situation. You know, that's. I, I think everybody agrees with that. Uh, um, not everyone's going to also agree, but with this one. But I also think the players uh, who are standing down um, need to take a good hard look at themselves, uh, give them a flying. Um, uh, 
fists across their own face and wake up to themselves. I mean, it's massive hypocrisy um, on show here for them to stand down uh, due to religious beliefs and not being able to wear a gay pride jersey, but they certainly can wear a jersey um, that has foot-high letters on it that advertise uh, a gambling bookies uh, out outfit and as well they play at a stadium which is of course named after a brewery and a beer company um, and if you can tell me that uh, uh, the harm that um, that gays do in, in our community is fuck all compared to the harm that uh, uh, <laughs> the, the alcohol and gambling do in our community so dead set they need to give themselves an uppercut over that one um, but anyway, that's my, my personal uh, ideas on it. As you can see this week, I've given up on my beloved Manly. Never done this before, but uh, this for this week, um, I'm going to be following another team. Haven't picked one yet, but I've got a nice jersey in the background. I've got the South Sydney hat on, so here we go. Let's get to super coaching. So for the super coaching this week, you, the, you'll see the article is up um, on the website, and if you haven't, go to the website. There's some great articles there. Um, but my team wrap-up from last week um, is up there, and I wanted to return back to where a lot of these articles started, and that is, you know, I, I did notice a couple of really outstanding PPM efforts this week uh, that we should look at and are relevant because a lot of people will be selling Okolatu given the fact that he's not going to be playing, also given the fact that he has 111 BE, uh, he's worth 635k. That's an awful lot of money for a second row to be sitting on your bench doing sweet F all. So if you've got the trades, and a lot of people do have, say, six and five trades, seven trades, you got those sort of trades, you should move him along. Um, and this week, of course, is the week to do it. So the first one to look at, the first one we will have a, a jump into, um, is this fella, Pat Carrigan. Now, well, Pat Carrigan, uh, 547k, so you basically make yourself nearly 100k on the downgrade down to him from Okolatu. Um, a 63 average, uh, which, you know, did get, he did get eased back in from injury earlier in the season, which has brought, brought his average down a little bit there. Um, his next three games, um, I don't mind. I mean, you've got the Tigers, the Roosters, and Newcastle. Um, so three good, not too bad matchups coming up really for the Broncos. Um, against the Tigers and the Roosters, uh, the last time that he played them, and that was last year, he got 72 against both of them. Um, 72 out of a second rower uh, is not too bad this year. You know, the second rowers have been hard, hard work for a lot of us. Um, and when they played, when he played against Newcastle earlier this year, he got a 67. Um, Counting against him, he only has a high score of 92 so far this year. Uh, however, you know, I, I wouldn't sneeze at 92 out of my second row. Uh, as I pointed out a minute ago, second rows have been a bit of a death area in the front row um, for a lot of us this year. So, you know, I, I do think that Pat Garrigan is worth a serious consideration. Um, uh, given his upcoming draw, um, and he's got some, you know, that first weekend of the... Uh, week of the head-to-head -head finals there. Um, I, I think he's got Newcastle, so well, he's got the Roosters, actually Roosters, and then Newcastle the second weekend, so um, that's not so bad, really, is it? That's a, it's not a nice, that's a nice little draw. Um, the next PPM crazy man um, is this fella, Adam Elliott. Now, I know I, I often try to go down to cheap ones, um, there were, you know, a little bit of value. However, I mean, there's no point in this time of year. And if you've got an Ocalado, you've got to go for your premiums. And this guy, surprisingly, is a absolute gun and a PPM monster at the moment. Um, starting lock this week, 614k. So you only he's, he's still not he's still going to make a little bit of money on a Ocalado to him. Um, but you are paying uh, a fairly high price for him. He's about at the peak of his price value now. Um, I think he's at the peak, unless he knocks out 100 or something like that. He, he's just about at the peak of where he's going to get to. Um, and there you go, my dog's going crazy. Um, he's got a, 
Uh, as I said, he's got a five-round average of 74 at the moment. Um, that's probably the, I think it's the best of any second row going around at the moment um, for a, a five-round average. So he's really peaking lovely. He's got the Titans, the Panthers and St. George coming up. So it's a couple of really nice rounds there. The Panthers won, well, that could be certainly a, a, a tough matchup. The last time um, that he played the Panthers, he got 65, though. So uh, the last time he played St. George, he got 77. Um, and the last time he played the Titans, they got 61, 60, uh, 61 there, Titans this weekend. And so Adam Elliott, certainly one to keep your eye on. All right, just short and sharp this week. Sorry to bring politics into it at the beginning. I won't do that again, I promise you, folks. Um, yeah, have a look at Adam Elliott and Pat Carrigan. Certainly premium options, but options that... Um, uh, you really need some consistency in that second row, and there's two that are that are just oozing it, uh, and all on the back of very high PPM. All both of them, I think last week got, were both over 1.2 PPM, um, and, and have been way higher than that in the last few weeks as well. Uh, so do give them some consideration. Uh, for anybody that, that tuned in last week, I hope you, you know, I think I gave three tips out, Meanie. Dearden and Val Holmes. I don't think any of them let anybody down. Um, and if you got them, they're actually good holds for this week. Play them because um, I, I think all three are going to score very nicely again. Um, Carrigan and Elliot, boys, tell us what you think. I uh, And I hope we all see some green arrows this week. Good luck, everyone. Thank you, Braddo. Braddo, you're, you know what? Last couple of weeks, you've been on point again. Did and done well last week. Um, I like Paddy, man. But oh. Paddy Carrigan, I've, I've liked since Origin. Yeah. Origin 1. I looks haven't, good. I haven't jumped on, but, yeah, I really see the I really see the potential in Paddy Carrigan. Um, and Origin just made him a bit better, I think. Uh, would any of you jump on Paddy Carrigan as a bit of a part? Or? I, I don't mind it, but... Oh, I feel there's an eight, enough safe second rolls around there. It could be a pot option, but I'm looking more for X-Factor at the moment. I want that big ceiling to kick our Dave Fafita type of thing. Yeah, I've, I've had Pat Kerrigan since um, since Origin 1, actually. Um, yeah, love it. Chugging along well for you. Chugged along well. Got a 77 last week, um, although I didn't put the R on him. That's my bad. Uh, oh, rough. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, no. I, if you're looking for someone that you know you're going to get points from, he's not going to have a kick out where he, he could come out and score consistently low and then pile on two or three tries in one game. Yeah, um, he's consistent. You know what you're going to get. Yeah, and the other one he touched on was Adam Elliott. Yeah, you had Elliott till he got sick that time. You had regret sale, didn't you? Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, round nine, I yeah. got him in, 400 and something K, just played hooker, thought, yeah, great. Got the flute next week, so I'll flick him for Maddo. And he's chugged along pretty well. Yeah, as he's done. Exceptionally well. So, yeah, I, I see merit in both of them. Now at 614K, I just can't bring myself to bring him back in. <laughs> no, I can't. But Even though the Raiders do have a really good run. If I had an injury or something like that, I'd definitely be having a look at either one of those guys to plug a hole. Or if I did, if I had like, just was relying on Ola Kawatu as well to play this week, I, I probably would maybe think about flicking him for an Elliot at least, because Elliot's got a bit more try scoring potential than Carrigan, I think. Yeah. So yeah, that's the way I go. What about you, Jazzy? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> definitely not me, bro. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, that's what we like. Any live ones up there, boys? We got some live questions. We'll jump into questions, and then we should be just about done. Um, I have a couple of Facebook ones if we want to start there. All right, Brad Smith. I'm not super coaching this week due to my Rastafarian religious beliefs and with the need to express my apathy along with the desire to sing Bob Marley songs, which is probably not a bad thing because Bob Marley, let's face it, was a good dude. Like, all his songs are pretty happy songs and they're all bringing people together. Um, I know what that was. Oh, because he loved the fucking... <laughs> Rastafarian life. <laughs> Good on him too. 
Um, no, well, good on you, Brad. You stick staunch with that, bruv. I'm going to join you on the Rastafarian train later. Um, Clayton Gable, do you think Garrick will still post a decent score this week, or should I leave him out of my side? I have Suwali, Dylan Brown, Kalolo Matangi, Tom Malolo, Carrigan as Mamma's options for my, for my reserves along with Garrick. I'd definitely consider leaving him out. Yeah, who would you leave him out for? Suwali in that where they're probably going to pile on some tries. Yeah, absolutely, roosters. I'd play Suwali this week. Yeah, yeah, out of all of them, I'd, I'd probably play, I'd play Mam against the Tigers too, if you could. Yeah, that'd be a good. A good I like get. that. Yeah. Uh, what about you boys? Skip Garrick. Yeah, probably. It's going to be a rough week for Manly, I think. Yeah. I don't get wrong. These blokes still train with the squad, but it's one of those things. It's not your top squad. And it seems I, to... Um, I reckon uh, I, I, I'm playing Garrick. I reckon any attack that Manly's going to do, Garrick is going to be there with his hands on the ball. Him and Cherry Evans. I reckon I'm playing him. See, don't get me wrong. I completely agree him. with you with that. Like, I, I think the Roosters will probably have a bit of a blinder this week. They're coming in some form. But Manly at home, uh, Cherry Evans and Garrick will have to do, do it all pretty much. But the only other advantage there is there's seven players out. They're bringing in half a reserve grade team that already know how to work together. You know what I mean? Like they're, br- yeah, they're bringing in players. Standard. No, and I'm, and I'm well aware of that. Like They are part of the training squad or the reserve grade squad, but... At least they're bringing in people that already know how to work together too. So there's already some combinations probably existing that's coming into the team, uh, which may so you help think out. Not, not such a shot, duck. But no, nah, I think they've got a chance, man, because I think they've really got to fight for this now. They've got to really go out there and fight for this win because they just give up on this. What was the point of doing this? Yeah. You know what I mean? They've caused this big fuss. These kids are going to have a bit of pressure on them, I think, to go out and not get their shit kicked out of them by the Roosters. They got two wingers who I think are on debut. That's already asking for trouble right there. They got Dylan Walker playing in the centres, who hasn't played there in quite well, he's filled in there a few times. Um, they're missing their strike forward, Ola Kalatu. I'm not saying that on paper it doesn't seem I'm saying as a group that is going out there to face a crowd on Thursday night. You Mate, hate. you've got to step up. It's been a big week. Like you've got to let your your actions on the footy field do the talking. So they're in trouble. Big, big trouble. All right, Grant Bradley took your advice last week, guys, and went Walker to Munster. Now what to do with Dylan Brown? Tough run coming up. Pampers, Manly, South Broncos. Hold, sell, or jump. Drink water up. Drink water up into five eight. Five eight. How crazy do you want to be? Go crazy, go nuts. Give him something. Jack Whiten. Jack Whiten. We had the, after the Titans this week, we just a good matchup. They got the Panthers, but then they finished with Dragons, Knights, Manly, Tigers. Ooh. So if a... those three weeks of head-to-head action there, Jackie could be a point, big point of difference for you, maybe. Super pod, really, eh? He'd be, he'd be one of the only classic players with him. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, it's a huge gamble. It does have low floor. Yeah. It does have the high ceiling games in him too. Like, has if, proven before. If you don't have a Nico Hines or something like that, but I'd Strong manoeuvre and try and get Nico in Yeah, with their run coming up. But for me, also, Drinky's run's very nice. I know he had a bit of a shit week last week, um, but I just put that off to a good Tigers game and a poor Cowboys game. Um, I think Drinky will bounce back and he... He could also be a good hold. Like I know everyone's got him, but well, is he is is in he's your the opinion, one White and going to outscore Drinky? From he's the one's on the chopping block for me this week. Just yeah. to get Teddy in, I don't want to sacrifice Trell. Otherwise, I've got to get rid of Mam. But I think Mam against the Tigers is a bit too juicy. He's made a lot of cash, and if I'm going to nuff that position out, I'll just go to the second best five eighth. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I I think drinking might not be the craziest get off at this point. Louis, sorry, I missed the question. What was what was it? <laughs> uh, jump, hold, drinky or sell? Uh, I'd probably be selling drinky. Yeah, yeah. They got a pretty good run. Well, it depends who who did he say he was going to who's going to or? Nah, he just asked who who to go to pretty much. 
uh, to confirm him, Jackie Boy White, which isn't a bad one because mm. Jack does go and run. But he does have the low floor. Um, yeah. Yeah, that bit torn there. I'd probably go to sell Drinky. Uh, but again, it honestly it depends who you're going to. Yeah. Right, eh? Mm. Dang. M- Munster's your only clear cut option, I think. I dare mm. say he'd have Munster. He brought Munster last week, went walking to Munster. There you go, yeah. Uh, Dane Greyregger, with Jerome Luai out long term, will we see a decrease in Panthers' left edge attacking stats like May, Targo, and Kikau? I don't think so. No. I think the balls will still come from Mo Sullivan. Oh, I think, it, if anything, it might improve. Really? Well, it would be a different style attack. I think it would be a lot more structured down that side with O'Sullivan there, but uh, I think, yeah, they're well trained enough. Those boys know how to hit their holes, and Sean O'Sullivan will know how to get them the ball at the right time. Yeah. So I think it will definitely won't hurt them. Yeah. I think the other advantage uh, that you've got with O'Sullivan, he's got a bit of a kicking game too. And I think that's one thing that exposed, like, well, was exposed during Origin. If you really put the pressure on Nath and you can get to him, mate, whole team's in trouble. Like, if he can't kick him around the park, he loses a lot of his game. It's what he's got. So they need that second kicking option. I think now they're starting to really miss Birdo. So well, they have that with O'Sullivan. Yeah, I've noticed the ball going more and more to Luai for kicks lately, and it's not a great kicking game. The, but, it, well, it's it sounds great in theory, but the way Penrith just relentlessly wear you down after fifteen minutes, most teams don't have the energy to get up off their line and be putting pressure on Nathan because they've already been putting a hurt locker. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's easy to say, yeah, let's do this, but to then there's teams that do go out there and do it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, it is it's hard to do it long term. I was watching um the game the other night against the Sharks, and the Sharks were really like putting up quite a good fight it was a very good game um but that's it you just got to around that 60th minute and they just sort of started running out staying and penrith just didn't they just they kept don't. plowing on they don't. so yeah i'm hearing you no i think the stats maintain and then murray hill finally lost my patience with cody walker does he bring in matt burton or sam walker as his replacement now, that's what I was going to say, right? Like, if we're talking maybe getting rid of Drinky, now, Mam's an option at 5.8. I mean, you think you'd probably have him... I, mean, I don't know if I'd bring him in, but who who would you bring in? Because that's it. Do you bring in Birdo? Do you bring in someone like... like Who who is the go-to? I'd be almost worried about Walker's job security at this point. Sam Walker's been chugging along nicely the last couple of weeks. Um... But I, I don't mind Birdo. He he seems to be doing a lot for the dogs. And his super coach points seem to be backing him up a bit. The dogs are going to give up. You know what I mean? Like they don't really give up on the year, do they? No, he seemed to go right at the end. Um, we got we got a reasonable draw, I think. So I'm not too. Well, since round nine, Birdo's only had two scores under sixty. One being a fifty-seven, and. All the rest being 70 plus. Against some top sides too. 71 against Raiders. 98 against Panthers. 82 against Parramatta. He's 28 coming against the Sharks. 83 against South. Yeah, he's not a bad option actually. Well, he, him and the Fox, they formed a great combination on that edge. And with Birdo's... Birdo's boot and Adekar's and car speed. Speed, yeah, it's just... That's it. If you're not it's ready for lethal. it, he can pull it out on third tackle, really. If, if no one's down there, Fox will get down there first. All he has to do is just keep it in the field of play. Like, make sure it doesn't kick too long. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. Like, you, just the way you can kick him down and pin him down in the corners and Fox can get there and lay it on someone to start them out of their, out of a corner. And now he's kicking goals and the dogs are actually scoring tries. It's... I was going to ask that. Is he, is he their goal kicker? Is yeah. he their primary yeah. goal kicker? So. Not, not a sharp shooter, but... Nah, he but... Him. See, yeah. Like said, I'd, I'd probably tries. look at Birdo there. He's saying that. He's only missed two kicks out of his last... So. Well, How right. much is he? It'd be expensive. 617. Yeah, okay. Come with, off the 126. You'd want to get him now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, on the Twitter, Arson get Ars, Ars Dragon. 
Walker to Haas, where for shot. Ranked 535th with only four, uh, three trades left. Option two is Talon May to Haas. Short on cash, don't really want to sell anyone else. Um, I'd sell Walker over May. Yeah, I think I think May's got the high ceiling at the better club. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's probably the way I'd go. He's Haas and must for you, but also, I guess he is if you're really looking to get him in that bad. He, he's been he's been that front row for everyone all year. He's just been the number one. Toddy G, he was looking at selling. Uh, t- Talon May this week too, but then remembered he's playing the Eels, so Wing is jamming in for days at the Eels, and they they really do. So we spoke about that before the show, yeah. Yeah, there. Um, then Nick Kuhn, Cody Walker to Munster. I know the Storm have been poor lately, but is it a good trade and worth an upgrade? I like it. I do. I think I think Munster's your man. You want to finish with? Everyone's got him, so he's. He's got the big scores in him. He's shown it all year. He's probably the best 5'8". So you sort of want to have him unless you're potting on hard somewhere. And if that's it, you want to have the two next best. Because, yeah, like you have said a couple of times tonight, they will probably get played back into form the next couple of weeks. So, yeah. All right. That's questions. You got any liveies over there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, first of all, Brian Ings. Uh, Cleary to A Ray as a pod move. Thoughts? I don't like it personally, but I was wrong about A Ray earlier in the year. He's come back to the field now, but I don't like it. It's a massive pod move. I'd I'd be looking to maybe go elsewhere and try to have both of them if I could. But if that's the only way you can go, I'd probably hang on to Nafe. I just they're 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 a good side, Penrith. I know Brisbane aren't doing too poorly, but. I think Naif outscores him from here to there, here to the end. Fair enough. Um, oh, I'm I'm saying I'll, I'll stick with Cleary. Yeah, yeah. me too. Um, Elijah Tippany. With Crichton, Lolo, McInnes and Olukuatu in my back row and three trades left after this round, do I need to upgrade my back row? Not now. McInnes got an extra two or three weeks or two weeks for Nukin's gone for, isn't he? Two weeks. So that's that's good for anyone that owns McLean's or McInnes. Um, yeah, I'd be hanging on to McInnes for definitely for the next couple of weeks anyway. He was good with no Dale. I had him. Yeah, I'll, I'll take him or leave him personally. Oh, there's a couple of others on there. You just want to know if there's any strength. In Does he feel like he needs oh. to upgrade his back row? What what was yeah. his whole back row, sorry? Uh, it was... So give me one sec. Uh, Crichton, Lolo, McInnes, and Olukuatu. Who's his front row? Yeah, Lajo, if you're watching, oh, yeah, let no. us know who's in your front row. That's not too bad. I like it. I like it. If you're short on trades, I wouldn't be wasting one trying to strengthen that. No, it's pretty it's solid. Type any IPAP and maybe still Max King. He could have hung or on Josh the Haas. He could have. Well, possibly, yeah. Yeah. And and Max King's been chugging along nicely since being moved to starting roles. Yeah. And with McInnes too, if a hooker goes down, you can swap him up there and bring in a back row if there's no other hooker that tickles your fancy. Yeah. So it opens up options too. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I'll obviously got the tool position. That's why I've hung on the Cotter so long. Yeah. Any others? Yeah, one more. Um, oh and of course, it's decided to reload. Um, got reserves, Trell and Targo. Who out of Max King, McInnes, Dillbags and May for the other two reserves? May. May's definitely one for me. And not probably not Dillbags this week. Um, who are the forwards? Max King, I think. And who? Um, uh, he said he got Ma- Max King, McInnes, Dill Bags, and May. Oh, well, it's a tough one. I'll probably bench. I'll be playing McInnes for sure, and probably May. Who would you be playing? You wouldn't be playing Dill Bags against Penrith. Well, I mean, it's a broken combination in the halves. 
Yep, that's the only drone we could we was not all that great to begin with. Those three could flip a coin, I reckon. Jill Bag's obviously got the biggest potential out of him, but he's also got the biggest risk with him too, so depends how much you like a gamble, I guess. Max King and McInnes, I think, will score roughly the same ish. There won't be too much between them unless one of them jags a try or something. Yeah. Massive jag. But yeah, so is that us? Hashtag justice for Dale. Um, poor Dale got robbed at the judiciary. And I'm on the Discord tomorrow night. Find it on Spotify probably Thursday morning. On there with some real good dudes too, so check it out. Anything da else? See you later, people. Good luck. Stay coachy, coaches. Coach out.